Because what Dawkins will do is, is zero in on what he thinks is bad design. Now, it's not a very good argument, rarely, because it doesn't prove there wasn't a design. You just say that the design doesn't meet, match his standards. Now, one thing he's um, done is, for, for over 25 years, is said the human eye is badly designed because it's wired backwards, he claimed. You see, you think of how the light's coming this way from your pupil through your eye, and here is the retina. And what he sees here is that the nerves are here in front of the light. And the light has to go through these nerves and things before it reaches the photoreceptor, uh, the, the light-sensitive cell, the rods and the cones. That's why he claims there's a bad design in the retina. Here is what he says about it, and he says it in his, his latest book, because he's been saying it for years, okay? He said, any engineer would laugh at any suggestion the photocells might point away from the light with the wires departing on the side nearest the light. Yet this is exactly what happens in all vertebrate retinas. Each photocell is, in effect, wired in backwards, with its wire sticking out on the side nearest the light. But in fact, um, engineers, if they knew what they were talking about, definitely would not laugh at this. And there are several reasons for this. One has been known for a long time by experts in ophthalmology. We've had some on our website, I quote them in my book, uh, like Dr. George Marshall and, and Peter Gurney, who are actually professional ophthalmologists. And they point out, and have for a long time, you see, these cells here are very active. They require lots of energy, which means they need a rich blood supply. And that's supplied by the choroid a very high blood flow to the choroid there. The thing is, you don't want blood in front of the, uh, of the uh, light, because blood, if you have a hemorrhage in the eye, it, it, it blocks the light completely. It's very bad for you. So the thing is, if you had the eye wide the way Dawkins said, you had to put the blood supply in front of the, of the light, which wouldn't be any good at all. So when you put the, light, the blood supply behind, that's why you have to, to shove the nerves in front, you see. That's, that's the important thing which, is, which Dawkins overlooked, that his superior eye would not be able to see. Or else it would have to lack a blood supply, which means you'd be about, uh, if you had a flash camera, I've been taking had some photo, I wouldn't be able to see even now, because the, because the, the photo set re cells would not be regenerated after the flash. So, so here's a problem, which uh, he really has no excuse for not knowing because ophthalmologists have pointed this out for a long time. But in fact, discoveries in the last uh, five or so years have really blown away Dawkins. Because what we see, uh, this is only a very uh, crude diagram, what they've found now is in fact you have the Mueller cells which actually act as a fiber optic plate. So in fact, there's no distortion because in fact the, the Mueller cells funnel the light through this forest of nerves so it reaches the photocell without any distortion. So in fact, you've got this fiber optic plate there. So it avoids the very problem that Dawkins said was a problem, that you've got the light going through these nerve cells. Well, in fact, you've got this, uh, this optic plate making sure this is not a problem. And in fact, it becomes an improvement, as was discovered. Uh, some, some evolutionary researchers said it was an optimal structure. Because what these Mueller cells are doing, they're also, uh, they are funneling light in a very efficient way. So you're actually getting more light collected this way. Also, you're getting rid of scattered light. You know, one problem with cameras, which they hope to solve by copying the eye design, is scattered light. You see, light bounces off the walls of a camera and interferes with the film or, or whatever you're doing. So scattered light's a problem with cameras. But what the Mueller cells are doing, it, it only, it cuts out any scattered light. It only takes the light from the pupil. So that's one thing it does. It also avoids the problem of chromatic aberration. You know what, what happens when you look through a lens? It, the lens is like a prism, so it separates the colors of light out. Well, it's very pretty, it makes the rainbow, but it's not much good if you're trying to see an image because you've got these colored fringes there. So what the Mueller cells do, it actually cancels out this chromatic aberration. So it actually improves the sharpness of the image. And so it does all these amazing things. So Dawkins' so-called superior design would lack uh, the Mueller cells to do these, uh, these optical improvements that our eye does. So really, the, the, this, this, these new discoveries really blow Dawkins away. He's really got no uh, excuse anymore. And that's, there's an article on the, the site about this, how his latest eye discoveries just, just uh, demolish uh, one of Dawkins' favorite arguments. Uh, there's got to be a series of advantages all the way in the, in the feather. If you can't think of one, then that's your problem, not 
uh, not natural selection's problem, natural selection, um, uh, well, I suppose that is a sort of matter of faith on my, on my mm. part, since the theory is so coherent and so, and so powerful. Um, uh, well, I suppose that is a sort of matter of faith, a matter of faith. Your strategy for proving the non-existence of God is to systematically rule out every piece of evidence for the existence of God solely because that evidence could be used to prove the existence of God. What a perfectly reasonable use of the scientific method, Patrick. Yeah, we'd love to see you employ this strategy in the laboratory, Patrick. Hey, Connell, I just proved that there's no such thing as barium. And how'd you do that, Donald? By throwing out all the samples of barium. I'm surprised more defense attorneys don't attempt this in the courtroom. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I have conclusively proven to you that my client is innocent, as long as you ignore the murder weapon, his confession, and the 400 witnesses who saw him stab that guy in the face. <laughs>